Are you interested in how you can connect with the people who matter in your job so that when there are times when new opportunities come up, they think you're that person for that opportunity? That's what we'll talk about today. A surplus of effort could overcome a deficit of confidence. Sonia Sotomayor. Today, we're going to talk about the third part of Patty Azzarello's book, Rise. We're going to find out how to connect better with the people who we work with, with our leadership in our organization, and how we can help them do their jobs while they help us do ours and help us find our next project or our next position. She says this isn't about politics. This isn't about office intrigue. Everybody needs help. Everybody needs a connection to other people in the company, other people you work with. Again, if you're forgotten in this company, you're not going to go anywhere. The first thing she suggests is making sure that you find a mentor. And sometimes mentors are people who are going to be in your company and will help you out. Sometimes mentors are the people who have the job you really want to have someday. So if you think that you're going to be great at this particular job and you would love to do it someday, find someone on that team or someone who's doing it who can help you. By the time you get there, they'll be the vice president of it. And maybe they'll think of you for that position. But always try to find someone to be a mentor who either has the experience you're looking for or someone who can help you get there in that job you really want to have. Maybe there's someone who has special access to some of the projects that are involved so they can help you get experience with it. Or maybe they actually have access to the job itself. But whatever it is, you want to make sure having them as a mentor will help you get to where you're going. And part of it, too, is that people like to have people on the team they fit in with socially. Nobody likes to go to work and have people who are crabby, people who yell at them, people who are no fun to work with. And so having a mentor will show them that you're a good person to hang out with and that you'd be fun to have on the team. They can really help you and influence whoever is making the decision to think about you. Talks about when you're looking for a mentor, maybe you want to pick someone who's maybe doing the same job you're doing, but has a bigger scope, a bigger leadership process, who's doing something on a global scale as compared to you who is just doing it at your local team. Maybe someone who's a couple of stages ahead of you in the career. Maybe someone who's older and has been through what you've been through before. Make sure that there's someone who is talented at the things that you want to be talented in so they can help you get there. And sometimes if you're looking for a mentor, maybe you need someone who's younger at you, who has a more dynamic view, a fresh view, just got out of college, and they can help you learn what the current trends are when it comes to this type of work, when it comes from college or educational systems that are there. Everybody has something to contribute and your mentors can be any age, any experience, She says it's important to have a couple of mentors out there for you. She considers it to be at least 10 smart people and that you should recruit one formal mentor as someone who's a career advocate for you. Someone who can help push your job and push your career to being somewhat better or help you inside your organization. I'm pretty shy when it comes to asking people to be my mentor. And so I have what I call in my brain secret mentors. And these are people who I look at their career I look at the things that they're good at and I try to follow what they're doing. I try to see how they handle business meetings, meetings with customers. How do they talk about difficult things with customers so I can learn from them all the time? She says that if you're asking someone to be a mentor, make sure that you're asking in a really appealing way, something that really maybe is flattering to them, something that they'll really find exciting to do. Maybe you have something to offer them that they would love to hear your feedback on. Make sure that they understand that it doesn't take a lot of time, that you have things that you can help them with. Then she talks about already keeping up with people you already know. You know, so mentors are one thing, but you know a lot of people probably in your company. And it's important that you keep up with them. Have lunch with them, go for walks with them. When you run into them in the lunchroom or in a Zoom meeting, ask them how they're doing and keep up with what's going on in their area of business. Sometimes it's really surprising. My company has grown quite a bit in a short amount of time. And so sometimes when I talk to old friends and other teams, I'm surprised about all the things they're doing. It's 
really interesting to me. And I'm learning about the different ways my company is growing that I just never even heard before. And it doesn't have to be a time sink. Just keep up with them. And even if that connection's very weak, it's very occasional, that's still really important too. So make sure that you also keep up with the people who work around you and that you have relationships. I have a coworker and she has this great idea and it's just one of my favorite things that we do. We have a monthly one-on-one together. I'm not her boss. She's not my boss, but we get together once a month and we talk about what's going on with our different work. And I think that's just been wonderful. I think it's been helpful to me. Hopefully it's been helpful to her, but it's a way for us to keep together in our network so we understand what's going on with the other person. She says too that LinkedIn and Twitter and some other groups can be great, along with other types of business associations, can be great ways to have other types of work connections, that it can build value in people you know. I know that for me, LinkedIn has been great because I don't get to hang out with customers that I used to work on projects with. But now I get to keep up with them on LinkedIn. I see their anniversaries. I see when they get promoted. I can just chit chat with them for a moment and ask them how they're doing without it being a formal email or a call. And so it's been just great to be able to keep up with my customers in a way that's not very formal and is really beneficial. She suggests that once you have built your pipeline up, you know a lot of good people, start coming up with this list of really good ideas that the company should follow. Talk to people that you haven't talked to, see what's going on, maybe going wrong on various teams. Start with conversations. Listen to what's going on. It may be that you have some really great insight in what's going on in other teams too. Or maybe your team is suffering from something similar their team is. Even better yet, maybe you can help them with something they're struggling with by doing a great job. I know that a lot of times I'll be in the lunchroom, you know, making my lunch and I'll ask someone how they are and they say, oh, well, my team is really struggling to understand how this function works and how our customers are using it. And I'll say, oh, why don't you look at my calendar and set up a meeting and I'll come and talk to your team and we'll talk about what this actually does for the customer and why they love it. And I can solve a problem for them. Not only that, I get to hear what's going on with them. Maybe it helps me understand that information is not getting around in the company like I thought it was. And that's something I could potentially fix. But it will give you good ideas that you can think of when trying to do a great job in your company. She also says that it's important in our network to do the job that needs to be done, not necessarily the one that's been given to us. And that it's really hard because you've been told to do this job. And I get stuck in that. I tend to be a rule follower. And so if they say, Jill, this is your job, I do that job because that's what I was told I should do. What she's saying is that you need to look out for what's best for the company, what needs to happen and do that job too. Do something that really makes you stand out as a leader. I always laugh. Sometimes politicians will say, well, I was leading from behind. There is no such thing as leading from behind. There's only leading in front. And so when you are doing the kinds of work that needs to get done, even if it's not in your job description, that is leadership right there. That is exactly what leadership is. If someone is telling you, Jill, I want you to work on this project and you do a great job with it, maybe it's great and it's fantastic and it's wonderful that you did it, but that's not leadership. If you maybe pulled together a team, if you rallied people, there's some leadership involved in there. But again, until you're doing what you see because you're an expert in your area needs to happen, that's leadership. That's what's important. So again, leadership is standing out and being in front and being confident of your ideas. And then when you do those leadership types of things, it will make you get new experiences and new abilities where people start seeing you in the company as someone who makes things happen. If you're looking for someone to find out information about maybe a job you're thinking about taking, probably a bigger job or a promotion, you can ask them the following questions. What do you think it takes to be great at this job? What do you think is the hardest part? What do you think is the most challenging issue? And she goes on with a lot of really great questions that you can ask. And like I said, I really recommend this book. You really have to decide about what job it is you want and then go learn about it, find projects related to it and then get support from the people who are in leadership who could give you this position. 
I think this is where I really struggled because I don't really know what I want. I tend to be the Jill of all trades. I like doing all sorts of things. So if you ask me what it is I want to be, I don't know. There's a lot of things I'd like to be. There's a lot of things I like to do. So it's very difficult for me sometimes to see that. So what she said is that you don't want to go into your boss's office necessarily and say, give me a development plan for my future. Instead, what she says is, once you figured out what it is you want to be, say, this is a job I want. I've been learning about it. I know how this job works. Can I get your support for this promotion? Hopefully that gives you the right step, or at least your boss tells you why maybe you don't get that support or what it would take to get your support. You know, I think that instead of saying, can I get your support, which is a yes or no question, it'd be better to say, what must I do to get your support in order to get this job? Tell me more about what I need to do. And she said that if you're not sure where you're heading, if you don't know what it is that you want to be once you get there, basically, no one's going to tell you. No one's going to tell you what it is you want to be. No one's going to tell you what the right direction is. It's not going to be helpful to you to just not know what it is you want to be. So if you're confused about that, make sure that you ask good questions, look at different areas in that company and try to figure it out what it is that you really want to do inside this organization that you're not doing today. But make sure that when you do ask your boss about getting support, that you're leading with all the things that you're good at, that you're looking powerful that day, that you're speaking well, and that you're comfortable. She said that comfort and confidence are really the most important things because you could go to therapy and try to learn confidence, or you could just decide, I'm gonna be confident because not being confident doesn't help you. It doesn't make you look good in front of anyone. I remember a long time ago when I first got into one of my companies, my boss said to me, well, it's really interesting because during your interview, you were very confident. But today, when you're talking about these projects, you're not very confident. What happened to that woman who was so confident? And I said, well, that's because I was talking about who I am. Now I'm talking about what I could be. And I'm not very confident about that. I'm really confident about about the things I was successful for in the past, the good projects I worked on in the past, that gives me confidence. Talking about a future where I've never done any of that work, sometimes I lack confidence in that. And she's just saying, just be fearless and go do it and have that confidence because if you don't, you're sunk already. And she says, if you're going in and talking about this other job that you should avoid talking too much about your experience, Everyone in the company, because you're in that company, also has really great experience. Don't talk about how you solve problems either. Everyone is a good problem solver as well. You don't want to sit there and say, you know, my skill set is I am a great time management. I'm a good public speaker. I'm really organized. You know, chances are most of the people that you're competing with for this job are also that way. So what you want to do is you want to get right to the line about what it is you're going to do. Tell a story about the changes you're going to make in that company, about how you're going to improve that company, about how you're going to change the way marketing does marketing or your development team addresses issues. You want to paint a picture of the future, not just sit there and go over the resume of skills that you probably already gave them that they're already read and they already know. Make sure that you talk about what it takes to actually motivate a team or what it takes to actually complete a large project and then hate that vision of you doing that stuff. She says it's important that you talk about why you're good at what you do. Why are you good at this particular task? What led you to being good at this task? What job, what project, what skill is it? Describe the initiatives that changed the way your company or your team did work. Where were your big successes? But she said the important part is that you make sure you get the scope right. You're telling the right stories with the right amount of time. You're not boring people. You're not taking up so much time. It has to be the right thing about it. And she said that if there's any type of concern about you not getting the job, just start doing the job. How much of that next job do you think you can actually just start doing in your current job? There have been times where my manager got promoted and for many months, Nobody was doing the job of the manager. And so what I tried to do is jump in and be that manager and coach people 
and help them and take the escalations and try to be there for those people. So if you have that ability to start doing the job before it's given to you, that'll pave the way for you being able to be visible in that position. Make sure that you're doing your homework, that you're gathering a lot of information about that position, what's important, what's been failing on that team, how do things need to improve, but that you can also bring in external opinions about it. If you found out that customers are very angry about how your customer service team is acting, can you bring that vision of customer anger in to leadership of your company so they know that's what's going on? Can you paint that picture for them? That will help people realize what keen insight you have to the problems this particular team has. And then the last thing she talks about is getting on the list. And the list means just having your name out there to leadership, to the people who make your decisions. You don't want to get into office politics, but you want to make sure it's like a political campaign. She says it doesn't have to be ugly. It doesn't have to be shallow. It doesn't have to be backstabbing. You have to be able to promote yourself to leadership so they know what a great person you are and what an asset it would be to have you on their team. So that list of those movers and shakers inside the company will help you be at the top of everyone's mind when a new position or a new promotion comes up. You have to remember that after your big presentation, the next step is action. Summary. Make sure that you find a mentor and connect with people who can help you understand your next job and the jobs around you so that you can take them on and that you can slide right into those new jobs, understanding what they are and how you're going to help. Two, make sure you keep up with your old connections, your friends in the company, coworkers that you talk to regularly. Find out how they are. Find out how they're doing. Find out how their teams are doing. Sometimes you're able to help them because you know something that would make their lives better. Sometimes they can help you because they understand something. But it also makes your working life so much richer when you have people around you that you love to talk to. And you might keep up with them on social media. LinkedIn is a great place to find your customers, your past coworkers. Keep those connections alive in any way you can. And go to lunch with people. That's a great way to keep up. Three, make a list of good ideas for the company and keep thinking about ideas. Idea making is like any other skill. Once you practice it every day, it get better and better at it. Four, figure out the job that needs to be done. Find someone who's doing that job or something close to it. Interview them and make sure that you understand what the job takes, what the job's like, and what are some of the hardships in the job so that you're prepared for that. Five, act confident, even if you're not. Because if you're not confident and you act like you're not confident, you're already sunk. There's just no point in it. Six, tell the story of what you will do. Don't talk about your past. Don't talk about your skills. Instead, paint the picture of your goals and how you would make things so much better in your company. And then start doing that job. Even if you don't get it, prove to people that you're good at it and that you should be on the list the next time that kind of position comes up. Challenge. Try a little experiment and start writing a daily list of 10 things that are just great ideas. You could do it for work if work is what you're trying to improve in your life, or you could do it for your home life, but become a better ideas person by doing it every day. And now our fun movie quote of the day comes from Galaxy Quest. And this is Sigourney Weaver, Tim Allen, and Daryl Mitchell. The beryllium spear has fractured under stress. It's fractured. Can it be repaired? Computer, can it be repaired? Damage to beryllium sphere, irreparable. Ugh. New source of beryllium must be secured. We need another one. Uh, you broke the ship, you broke the bloody ship. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Computer, is there a, a replacement beryllium sphere on board? Computer, is there a replacement beryllium sphere on board? Negative. Uh. No reserve beryllium sphere exists on board. No, we have no extra beryllium sphere on board. You know, that is really getting annoying. Look, I have one job on this lousy ship. It's stupid, but I'm going to do it, okay? Sure, no problem. 
Wow, I love that movie. It is one of my favorites. If you're finding out that you have one job and it's stupid and you still have to do it, try to figure out a way to get a better job that's not stupid and how you can go do that job instead. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for listening. Make sure you leave a review and you subscribe. And please tell a friend. Telling your friend is the best way that this podcast can take off. And then I can give you more content and more ideas to make your lives better through small steps. Thank you very much.